This week we are near the town of Kinross in the heart of Scotland. Yeah, I do get a very nice view from here. Right, let's see what we can see. And 1865, date of death for old William He Farmer. He Farmer, I'm guessing, is his surname and not his occupation. Quite modern stone at a joint angle from 1945 at the bottom or 1933 at the top. And then next to that one that is uh, much older with some nice scrolly stuff going on at the top and uh, again sort of vestigial text William something but yeah you can't really make it out that's a bit of a shame not doing very well at giving you dates so far am I? This is quite cool this is sacred to the of Thomas Bruce Captain of Her Majesty's 21st Royal North British Fusiliers eldest of Thomas Bruce Esquires of Arnott Kinrosshire's kids I guess died on the sea in 1863 and is buried at St Thomas's. I don't know where St Thomas's is, it's not here. Look at that, that's really smart. In memoriam, somebody for 1860 and at the top, I can't read what that says, you might do better than me, but it does say 1675 underneath it. Right, let's have a look over here. I'm guessing more great and good military types. Yes, Charles Morris Dundas Bruce, Captain Royal Field, Art Field sorry, Artillery and uh, Cecilia Margaret Bruce from died in 1957. What a cool wee chapel. I wonder if it's uh, like got burials inside it or if it's just uh, just there to look good. Tacked on to the back of it, past uh, memory of Mr Robert Forbes, a writer. Oh wow, there's <laughs> a trade that we haven't seen very often. Seen a couple of writers but not awfully many. And James White of Hillhead, Glasgow, who died in 1892, is this, which is uh, to the memory of Archibald Noel Skelton. Advocate, Member of Parliament, successively for Perth and for the Scottish Universities. Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for Scotland, 1931-1935. Yeah, great and good, I think. This is quite a well-to-do place, I think, just looking at the memorials here. In loving memory of my dear son and brother, George P. Harley, who died at St John's, New Brunswick. Is that Canada? Canadians tell me. Uh, 1901, interred at Maria, Mount Royal Cemetery, Montreal. His days were short the longer be his rest. God taketh soonest whom he loveth best. Uh, okay, whatever. And sacred to the memory of William Harley who died. Nice bit of script there. William Harley, 21st of March, 1860, aged one month. Also <laughs> aged and one's got lots of space and you have to squeeze to get the month in. Isabella who died on the 28th of March, aged 20 years. And Archibald and uh, suffer little children and all that gubbins. I've got no idea if any of this is working because of the uh, rather windy wind, but here we've got an old stone, again Masonic tools, a divider thing there, you know what I mean, a compass thing and a wee hammer and uh, a nice big marble monument, uh, beloved and excellent wife Margaret Hutchinson, beloved and excellent. I'm quite liking this one as well, it's been quite a good day. We found that one that we looked at up at that last place where we are, whose name I can't remember, I've forgotten. <laughs> It'll be the previous video on this channel and uh, now we're here. So yeah, Kinross is, a, Kinross is actually a really nice wee town. I might do a Scotland on a shoestring episode from Kinross at some point in the near future. I think heading up here we're getting into some newer bits. Let's see, in uh, memory of Mary Leburn, wife of Robert Burns Begg, Sheriff Clark of Kinrossshire. Yeah, <laughs> Sheriff Clark, I'm guessing quite an important man. What's on the other side? Probably the man I'm, no, nothing. There is nothing on the other side, but at least my shadow isn't all over it. Right, and then we've got uh, Agnes Dow Gibb, blah blah blah, 1933. So yeah, we're getting more up to date as we head up this way. It's quite nice, so let's go for a wee look over there and see if there's anything interesting amongst that field of picture-perfect postcard tombstones. It's nice how some of these stones sort of catch your eye. This is uh, Thomas Kinnear, husband of Euphemia. It's another Euphemia. Yes, we find the Euphemia. That is, uh, that is me happy. Died 7th of April 1933 and that stone goes up to date. The bottom one is actually 2020, so this part of the graveyard. Either he was cremated and that's just a memorial or he was buried here comparatively recently. And that is somebody who died in 1896. That was uh, Marion Malcolm who was 17. This place has got so many highfalutin well-to-do people in it. Living memory of James McDonald, JP, Justice of the Peace, as you probably know by now, of Devonshaw, who's a provost of Kinross until 1947. But I didn't see a sign on the gate that said there were any Commonwealth war graves here, but I can see one right in front of me. So let's go and let's go for a wee look. Told ya, Private W. McFarlane of the Royal Army Medical Corps, 14th of February 1919. Oh wow, remember the war officially ended in November 1918, so he was uh, 
a few months after the end of the war. Poor guy. Anything else interesting? Oh, there's a nice little angel statue over there. We'll go and have a look at. There's, uh, that looks, that's very fresh, that one. That one's just been dug. We'll not go and look too closely at, oh, right, there's another war grave over here. So let's, let's go and have a look at that instead. It is, what war do we think it's from? Oh, it's from the First World War again. This is Private McLean of the Royal Army Service Corps, who died in October 1918. Again, just like two weeks before the end of the war. He almost made it. She's quite cute, isn't she? A little, uh, little angel-y person there. That's, that's quite nice. Here we are in the 1930s, 1940s. Interestingly, the war graves are about the oldest graves in this part of the cemetery, going back to 1918. Let's see, towards the back wall. The back wall's always a good place to head for because that's sometimes where you find the biggest and most imposing stones. Uh, on the way, 1985 on that one, 1920 on that one. It is a real mix-up of dates. This is a resting place of James Hogg, who died 1898, Agnes Hogg, who died 1899, and Janet Hogg, who died 1900. So 1898, 1899, 1900. And they were the sons and daughters of Andrew Hogg and Isabella Ingalls, whose bodies rest in the West Churchyard, Kinross. Ah, see, that you come to these places and you see things like that. There's a West Churchyard. I'll have to go and have a look for that one day. Uh, and then this is somebody who had lots of money. This is uh, Alexander Smart, who died at Hayfield in 1887. And they are children, and it's got little like decorative bits to fill in the uh, fill in the gaps. That's quite nice. Uh, and of their children, James Boswell, 1894, Mary Sampson, 1913, Jane, 1951, and Margaret, who, 1955, out of darkness into his marvellous light. In loving memory of John Fairgrave, who died in 1938, and then somebody who wanted a big, big one, and that is John Alexander, in memory of Anne Wilson, his wife, who died in 1885. And there's another sort of postcard view, looking down through the graveyard and out over Loch Leven. That is really, really smart. It's turned into quite a nice day today. It was pretty horrible earlier on, but it's, uh, it's definitely getting better. Yeah, this is um, 1800, 1897, 1891, 1890-something. Eight, excuse me, why burp? 1890 something. Yeah, these are really nice stones. This was a very, very well to do area. It was on the main sort of turnpike road from Perth to Edinburgh, so lots and lots of trade coming through here. Lots of people would have made quite a lot of money. There's also lots and lots of local agriculture and milling and stuff. Nice wee place. I don't know why I've never come in here before. Let's, let's keep going down back towards the entrance. Ah, oh, wow, there's a really, really ornate looking tombstone. Let's have a look at the. Uh, erected by Sarah Liscombe in memory of Robert Gall, her husband, from 1911, and a daughter who died in 1913, etc, etc. And down here, this is the wee thing that I saw from the other side of the uh, of the graveyard. If you're a Doctor Who fan, you will know I'm presently not blinking, and if you don't get that reference, uh, just look up Blink Doctor Who and it'll explain it to you. Sacred to the memory of Frederick Hunter Williamson, B.D. Is that Bachelor of Divinity? Oh yeah, Bachelor of Divinity, because it says Minister of the Parish of Kinross from 1895 to 1944. And uh, John, his only son, who was a professor of mathematics at Queen's College, Flushing, New York. And he died in Flushing in 1949. It is good to get back out amongst the graveyards again. I've been really, really busy of late and unable to actually do a great deal of filming, but it's nice to get back out with a day that is like yesterday is devoted to going out and filming stuff. Uh, in loving memory of Murdoch Christie Anderson, M A L L B, Provost, another Provost of Kinross from 1914 to 1920. He died in 1956. And over there, in loving memory of Herbert Norman Scott Anderson, a second lieutenant in the Royal Flying Corps. Early days of the technology, killed while flying, 24th December 1917. 24th of December, what a horrible Christmas present for his parents. Another really nice memorial with a lot of information on it. This is uh, Andrew Westwater, who was a merchant from Kinross, who died in 1920. And his son, George Westwater, first, fourth Royal Scots, QER, no idea what, Q Queen Elizabeth's rifles possibly, killed in action at Gallipoli, ah oh, wow, with the Anzacs, 28th June 1915, age 21. And he's buried at Gully Ravine, Cape Hillis. I'm assuming that is uh, that is in Turkey. Oh, this is his grandson who died 1916, aged 16 and a half, oh, actually 16 and a half months, and his wife made it to 1940. How dear is home, study war, no more. Another military type grave, unfortunately the cross, which is lying down, has uh, taken a head 
header off the studding that I guess was supposed to keep it up there forever. Beloved memory of William Key Falconer, who was a lieutenant in the 7th Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders, and he was killed near Ypres on the 29th of April 1915. Ypres in Belgium, where you see a couple of our videos recently came from there. He was aged 20, and he was interred on the field of battle near where he fell which means he's either in a Commonwealth war graves, he's no run to God, or he's just uh, still out there somewhere waiting to be found. I was heading towards this fenced bit and I've just noticed what's right in front of me. It's quite good when you can identify Commonwealth war graves from, uh, from either side. And that is Private J. Stewart, the Royal Defence Corps. I've never heard of the Royal Defence Corps. I have no idea. 7th of September 1916, aged 49. Ah, I wonder if he was too old for active service on the front, so he, uh, he did his bit over here. The call was quick. The shocks of year to part with him we loved so dear. They paid a lot of money to have a little private sort of thing and uh, it's just about all gone. Mary Craig DL Dalziel is DL in, uh, in our stupid language. So Mary Craig DL, yeah, not much else left on that. That's a pity, because they've uh, made quite an effort to be remembered. They should have made quite an effort to use slightly better quality stone, I think. I wasn't holding out a great deal of hope of finding anything very old, and then I uh, stumbled across this, which has got an hourglass and a couple of very very chunky bones and a skull and that would be oh, that's a skull on the shoulders and the body under some sort of shroud but down the bottom here it says 16 am pb or fb but anyway important bit 16 90 so uh, that's that's a very very old He's a bit like the skeleton in the wall of the church at Ely, except uh, not quite as deeply incised, a little bit uh, less three-dimensional. Right, we're heading for the exit because it's starting to uh, started to rain again, believe it or not, in memory of Robert Leishman, the East United Presbyterian Church of Kinross, a parent and pastor of rare worth, <laughs> with the most dedicated Christian bearing, who died in 1865 at 90. Wow, he had a good innings, didn't he? And beside our 1690 chap over there, where those two guys are having a look, this is, uh, this is also quite an old one, with a skull and crossbones and a shield, and uh, can we see anything that looks like a D? Yes, we can. 1707. So that's, uh, this, there are some really, really old stones in this cemetery. They're just uh, all dotted about. Okay, there's got a big inscription there that I've just tried to read and it made my head hurt. So, uh, but at the bottom, it's got something interesting. It says, uh, if we departed this life, 1721 or 1722. Uh, not quite sure which. Never seen that before either. Looking at the door of this uh, crypt. I quite fancy coming back with a screwdriver because it's only held shut by uh, four screws as far as I can see. And around the other side of that there are uh, lots and lots of tabletop tombstones but this is what I'm coming to look at down here because this looks quite interesting. There's nothing else uh, quite the same as this. It's a little... Sort of, we can see what it is. It's a little walled in but there's a vaulted top tombstone that are usually quite old. No idea what I used to have on top of it in that, uh, that sort of bronze insert. But yeah, this is really smart. Let's have a look around and see if we can see anything uh, to give us some sort of idea of how old this is. But that's, uh, that's smart. I think that's a much older top because if you look at the bottom of that tombstone there, it looks like it's got a, like a, a recess at the bottom to sit it into the top of a sarcophagus. Uh, not sure at all. Actually, that's a guess. But... Uh, the top of the stone looks like a lot better quality and a lot higher sort of higher quality of masonry than the legs that it's standing on. That's interesting. Here's a title that I haven't seen before either. This is Sacred to the Memory of Jean Carter Gullen, wife of Robert Storer Young, JP Justice of the Peace. Actually JP FSA Scott. But he was Honorary Sheriff Substitute, Kinross Antiquary and Local Historian. So he was uh, a man who is <laughs> who knew this area quite well, you would guess. Not quite sure what's going on with this one. Let's go and see if we can figure anything uh, anything out. Probably not. Oh yeah, it's another. That's a set square, and that's uh, like dividers and tools and stuff. Uh, not sure what's going on with all this. It's uh, you know this is usually like a mason or you know like a, a builder or something. Not entirely sure, but it's uh, quite a nice stone. It looks like it's got the remains of. Also, like the, the end bits of bones there, so it could have been skull and crossbones. No real idea. Guessing. This is somebody with a bit of money as well. Guess what? It is. Uh, it is put up by a reverend. This is to Janet Morrison, spouse of the Reverend James He, and she departed this life after surviving her husband by seven years in 1856, and she was 85. And it says there she was a devoted wife, an affectionate mother, and an exemplary Christian. And then the sad bit down the bottom: of her eleven children, ten predeceased her. 
of the six ply with her here, the others are interred elsewhere. And it has now started to wee down with rain, so that is your lot. That is uh, Ken Rossi's old cemetery. One last look at the view. And down the bottom of the hill, stones that have either slid down here and been propped up. Some of them are still in the process of sliding down the hill, I think. Anything with any sort of date, uh, that one looks like it might have. But as I said, it's raining, so I'm not actually even going to look. I'm going back to the van to put the kettle on. But first, one last game of let's guess what's on the gravestone, because that one uh, I have no idea. There's a bar of some sort, and then uh, that's that, that one, uh, yeah. That is no idea. Looks like a moustache to it. <laughs> sure it's probably not, but uh, yeah, nothing written on it to give us a clue. Okay, one last one on the way to the gate. The gate is just over there. This is uh, another... No skull and crossbones, it's a crossbones and... Uh, guessing that's an hourglass, but look. 1710. There are some really, really old stones. I've said that already, haven't I? 